Nolan. I'm the moderator of the Orange Southwest Unified School, Union School District. And this is, or will soon be, the annual meeting of the school district. Before we begin, I want to let people know there's a copy of the warning and a copy of the budget up front. If anyone does not yet have those, please feel free to, to come up and get them. Uh, I, the meeting tonight will take up Articles 1 through 6 inclusive. Articles 7 through 13 inclusive will be voted by Australian ballot tomorrow. The voting polls will be for the residents of the town of Braintree at the Braintree Town Clerk's Office from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. For residents of the town of Brookfield, the Brookfield Elementary School from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m and for residents of the town of Randolph, Randolph Town Hall from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And uh, by residents, I mean people on the checklist of those respective towns. Uh, before we begin, welcome. And I will call the meeting of the school district to order. I will uh, dispense with reading the entire warning at the beginning, and I will read each article as it comes up unless an, there's an objection to that. Seeing no objections, Article 1, to elect a moderator for term of one year beginning July 1, 2019. What is the pleasure of the call? Patsy. Peter Nowlin has been nominated and seconded. Any other nominations? Oh, please. Hearing none, the nominations, the nominations are closed, and I'll just call for a vote. All in favor of Peter Nowlin serving as moderator for the ensuing year, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, I'll close my eyes, say nay. Any abstains? The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and Peter Nowlin has been elected. Article 2, to elect a clerk for one year, for a, for a one year term beginning July 1, 2019. What is the pleasure of the hall? Paul. I'd like to nominate Linda Lubo. Second. Linda, not, Linda Lubo has been n nominated and seconded. Are there any other nominations? Hearing and seeing none, I declare nominations closed. All in favor of electing Linda Lubo for a term of, uh, for clerk for a term of one year beginning July 1, 2019, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and I declare Linda elected. Welcome, thank you for coming in. Article three to elect a school district treasurer for a one-year term beginning July 1, 2019. Are there any nominations? Paul. I'd like to make a nomination for Teresa Godfrey. Teresa Godfrey has been nominated. Is there a second? I can't second myself. <laughs> you said, yes, James seconded it. <laughs> any other nominations? Hearing none, I declare nominations closed. All in favor of electing Teresa Godfrey for treasurer for a term of one year beginning July 1, 2019, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Congratulations, Teresa. Article four, to fill any vacancies ex existing or occurring on March 4, 2019. I'm not aware of any vacancies. Is the clerk aware of any vacancies? No. Is the superintendent aware of any vacancies? No. Then we will go pass over Article 4. Article 5, to hear and act upon the reports of the officers of the school district. The report of the school board is on page 93 of the warning, or the town report that I have. In, there are some annual reports up here. Do you want to make any oral supplements to your report while people are reading it? Okay.
talk a little bit, since primarily is uh, dealing with the budget, talk a little bit about what's been accomplished over the, the last year and what we're looking to accomplish in the coming year should tomorrow's budget pass. Um, current budget year accomplishments, the year that we're in right now, uh, we hardened all the school access points across all the schools in the district to train the staff in Alice to make sure that the teachers and the students in the schools are prepared in case of an emergency. Um, all the emergency processes and safety protocols have been updated and are in, in the process of being practiced by the staff. Um, we have improved the district's capacity to deliver effective math instruction, um, grades K to 8. All the teachers were trained in the eight standards for mathematical practice, and the majority of the elementary teachers were trained in the first 20 days of math, um, both that are practices that are tied to the common core uh, to enhance mathematical instruction. Uh, we've also brought in Track My Progress, a software package um, that helps teachers be informed about their instructional practice, uh, their assessments that the students take. They're short, they're brief, but they give feedback um, to the teachers on how the students are performing in each one of the mathematical standards so that the teachers can adjust their practice to match. If the students aren't doing well, the teachers know to stop, go back, and reteach. If they are doing well, they know they can move on um, safely and that the students will be prepared for the next year. Um, we created a high school program to mitigate trauma-based behaviors. Uh, we brought in an adjustment counselor and a behavioral interventionist into the high school. Those people are here now. Um, we are currently working on the digital literacy curriculum. That's in development across the district, K-12. Um, the special education department is working to develop a means to assess student progress for students that are on IEPs as a means to come back and inform us on the effectiveness of our programs that we have in place for those students now. Um, and with enough information to be able to adjust them uh, if necessary. Uh, we also moved critical personnel uh, from grant funded positions into the regular budget. Um, that was the technology director and the instructional coaches. The instructional coaches are folks that work directly with the teachers to improve their practice. Um, we accelerated uh, an exceptional amount of work in terms of uh, facilities initiatives. Um, there were extensive repairs to the plumbing systems across the school. Um, we, the schools, we replaced a lot of the water heaters and the water storage tanks. Um, there was extensive work done to the HVAC systems um, across all schools. Uh, we finally completed the fence at Brookfield. Um, we reclaimed the well at Brookfield, um, as well as part of the work that happened this summer. Um, we are currently addressing um, the lead problems uh, at Brookfield. So we finally got the water up to the point where um, it was, was palatable uh, for the students to drink. Um, but then we had some issues with the, the faucets that are up there that had been replaced when we get to the final testing. Um, we have a composting agreement that is now in place so that all the food um, that is coming out of the cafeteria um, that is waste uh, is going to be composted so that we are aligned with the state law. Uh, we are currently working um, and through phase one of replacing the Raven building uh, that supports students with special needs. And then we are working to ensure that we're in compliance across the board in all the buildings in terms of asbestos, copper, and lead water testing. Um, next year's goals. Uh, we spent a tremendous amount of time this past year looking at data. Uh, we looked at enrollment numbers, we looked at student performance, uh, especially in mathematics and ELA. Um, we took a look at enrollments in our subgroups, specifically our students with disabilities, and we pulled together all that information into creating the budget that we've been talking about now for probably the last three or four months um, in great detail. And what we've discovered um, really came into creating the goals that we have. We've got to mitigate the impact of the trauma-based behaviors that are happening across the schools in the district. Um, we've got to examine our special education practices and make sure that we are doing the best by these students that we can um, while not over-accommodating them. We must focus our resources on the core areas of math and ELA, and we must expand our programming, um, especially at the high school, given the increase in enrollments that we've had. We're up to five students over the last year. Uh, in terms of what we are attempting to build uh, should this budget pass, we would like to get a preschool in place at each of the elementary schools. 
Um, we are doing an exploratory program to examine what we want to bring in for science and STEM at the elementary level. Um, we are doing an exploratory program for pre-technology, a pre-technology program. Um, we will be building a therapeutic program to serve students at the elementary level across all three schools. Um, we will be increasing staffing for interventions, um, fixing the gaps in knowledge that all students, regular ed as well as students with disabilities have, um, getting those gaps fixed while we improve our curricular practices. Uh, increasing staffing, um, especially at Brookfield Elementary uh, because of the increased enrollments that we've had. Um, doing a major increase to facilities budget for a limited time. Um, there were a lot of things in terms of maintenance uh, that was either undone for a while or partially done. Uh, but we've got to kind of accelerate that process to get things up to speed where they should be. Focusing resources next year, um, especially in terms of mathematics at the high school. Uh, we've got a, a professional group from Wisconsin that's looking at coming out and coaching um, our mathematics teachers, helping them develop the curriculum so that it's perfectly aligned with the Common Core and also improving the practice in the classroom. We're bringing in a software package called STARS so that their instruction is informed. They can do many assessments with the students um, and get information immediately on how well the students are picking up on the standards that they are being taught. The last piece to kind of talk about, there are some increases in there, probably the most important ones. Um, for the first time, in a long time, the departments have been able to come together and actually state what their needs are at the department level, uh, what the teachers need in their classrooms to support their instruction, what professional development they need and would like. Um, and we were able to address all of those requests in this year's budget for sure pass. Um, I think that's going to be a vital piece to being able to improve uh, the academic programming in the school. Any questions of Lane for his report? And I'm going to open it up. Any questions generally about the budget? This is as good a time as any to start asking him about those. Seeing none. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Can you tell me more about this need for behavioral management? I'm curious because I teach locally in the college. So I'm curious for two reasons. One, really, you have to do all this in school stuff. And two, what am I getting? <laughs> yeah, actually, maybe good question. So not behavior management, but trauma, dealing with trauma-based behaviors. Um, across the state of Vermont, and there's a strong concentration of it in central Vermont, not just here in Orange County, um, we have students that have suffered significant abuse and neglect. Um, and when they come to school, they're in our classrooms. Um, they have picked up behaviors uh, that are detrimental to learning, not just for themselves, but for the other students that are in the classrooms as well. The behaviors are really a part of a protective system um, that have come into place as the students have experienced the trauma in their lives in the outside environment. Um, and they're not really compatible uh, with school life. And so the important piece here is to try to get some programming in place uh, so that we're teaching these students how to self-regulate their behaviors so that they can be successful. Um, I can go into a lot more detail if you want. I'm just... Uh... I'll, give you an, uh, I'll give you an indication of the impact. Um, special education um, here is $3.3 .3 million of our budget. It's been growing by about 15% per year over the last two or three years. Um, most of that growth is because of the students who are if we don't mitigate them here, which is much more cost effective, we end up having to send them out to outplacements. The cost to send a student to an outplacement, um, if they're low, um, kind of on the spectrum, um, is probably about $36,000. Um, if they're high on the spectrum, it can be in excess of $200,000. And that does not include transportation. That's an annual cost. That's an annual cost. Um, and it's required under the IEP process. Second, second, they need it, and they're identified that they need it to be able to advance in the, the curriculum those services we have to supply. How much has that increased? 15% uh, per year. Wow. 
so you know, 3.3 million out of uh, this past year, 16.5 million dollar budget. And in terms of percent of population. The uh, percent of population are, depending upon which school you're at, 21 to 26% of the students in a school are on IEPs. That does not mean that all of them are on IEPs due to emotional disturbances. Uh, but that number, like I said, has been increasing. It's, you know, the biggest increase that we're getting is going up every year by about 1%. So the total population of the district, 1% more of that total population is on, on an IEP year goes by, the majority of the new ones are students with emotional experiences. Older students, um, primarily academic. Um, where are we in comparison to the nation? Um, our 21% overall district average um, is about twice the national average. Um, and that's true for most of our market. Any thoughts on why that is? Uh, it's mostly home environment. Um, it's drug addiction. I mean, there's neglect is a part of this as well. It's not just uh, severe physical and sexual and emotional abuse that the students suffer. Um, but there's neglect if the parent is drugging and not being attentive to the student because the student or the child has to witness that. That's traumatic. Uh, if a parent is abusing the spouse in the home, that is traumatic. Uh, if a student is very young and can't take care of themselves and is not being taken care of, that's left in their diapers all day for two or three days at a time. Those traumas, those adverse um, events that those, those students are receiving and seeing every day, they translate into behaviors that happen in the school. Um, the protective mechanisms that come into place to help them deal and to help them cope, um, right? Fight, flight, freeze. Um, they act out in the classroom. The fighting students, especially at the elementary level, they yell, they scream, they kick, they throw. Um, and it can stop education in the classroom for an extended period of amount of time. Um, and then it takes an awful lot of time to get that student regulated again, um, calm back down to a level where they can kind of process as normally as they can. Um, the flight students run. Um, you know, it's not unusual last year to have two administrators out with the police looking for students that ran out of the building. Um, things were triggered. And the problem with these behaviors is that uh, the systems are autonomic. Um, in other words, they happen below the level of consciousness, so you can't get the student to kind of rationalize them away. Um, and it just, anything can trigger. Um, the body has a sensory memory system, um, so anything that's happening in the environment that may trigger through the senses a memory, um, the body identifies as potentially dangerous and set them off. Um, could be as simple as a new person in the room, could be a facial expression, and it doesn't take much. So our goal, our job, is kind of long-term investment. If we invest the money up front, we mitigate these students, we get the behaviors dealt with, they're going to be successful through the remainder of their, their lives. We're not going to be sending them out, especially by the time they hit the middle or the high school level, because um, a student who kicks and screams and throws things is not safe for that day. I'm not safe for their small day, but certainly not safe for their small day. Uh, it's about the resources as well. We can mitigate it now, if we can solve the problem now, uh, get the student in a, in, a, in a better place, then uh, we're not going to be paying the exorbitant amounts of pain. We had two students come in last year, 300,000. We've got two students this year, 245,000. Even if we can, even if we can mitigate two, three, four, five of them, it's going to have a significant And those resources, once we have them, uh, when the programs start to work, we'll be able to shift into other things. Making sure we've got full day preschool um, across the district at all the elementaries, um, pumping money back into the advanced academic. That's it. I'm really glad to hear that you are going in this direction. The call it treatment or whatever that these students will get. Are we at the point where that is evidence-based or evidence-informed? Yeah. 
Matter of fact, um, there, there are two pieces to this. The preschool is intended to help a bit, and then the therapeutic program is intended to help a lot. Um, with the preschool side of things, if we can get the students early, um, get them in around other students, just the normal action of having that social support from other students um, is incredible for their resilience. Um, what typically happens with, with these poor guys is that the behaviors that come out, these trauma-based behaviors, um, don't bode well for keeping friends. Um, and so they lose that whole structure of support that could be there otherwise. Um, so getting them into the preschool program isn't just going to help them academically down the, down the line, well-researched, we know that that's going to happen, but it's also about building that resiliency piece. Um, the therapeutic program is based on years and years and years uh, of research. Um, a lot of it was um, pulled together for us uh, by David Melman. Uh, there were two of us that went off and took a, a course with him through Castleton um, that really delved into the research, you know, what is trauma, what, what is, do we believe the current causes of it are, um, and what are the best ways to build a program to treat it. And what the therapeutic program is designed to do um, is build on that because it recognizes something that's critically important. Um, and that's the fact that once the behaviors are starting, once the student's been triggered and they start acting out, it's too late. There are physiological changes in that, that fight, flight, or, or freeze uh, piece that happen first. And if we can tune the student into their own bodies and their self-awareness of, you know, my stomach's feeling a little bit upset right now. You know, I'm breathing a little bit harder than normal. That's an indication that they're about to be triggered. And you can disconnect the system at that point. If you wait and try to keep, treat the behaviors, it's too late. Um, so the goal with the therapeutic program, giving them a safe space they can retreat to, giving them a person who can help them regulate to calm back down and then process what happened and look for um, what those portents were, what things were foreshadowing the behavior that was about to come out, and then working with the students on some, some strategies. Okay, when your stomach starts to feel, feel a little bit upset, what are some things we can do to, 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 to break this cycle? And it's usually simple stuff. It's little dexterity exercises. It could be as simple as a walk. It could be a deep breath. Um, but they've got to start to associate what's happening in the body um, with the potential, what, it, what, it's, what it's saying is going to happen next. Um, and that's what a lot of the work is about. The students with the therapeutic program that we're building, right, they're still maintaining as much of their time in the regular classroom as possible. They get a chance to develop some skills. They go out and they practice it. They will fail the first couple of times. They come back, they get a chance to kind of calm down and be brief. Um, and then aside from all that, one of the most important things that those students need is they need to feel that they have some control over their own lives and somebody cares about them. And sitting down one-on-one -on -one with a competent adult who's working with them on this specific problem um, is going to do just that. So there's a lot of parts and pieces to this. Um, but it really is designed to keep the students as engaged in the regular classroom as possible while creating a safe space where they can come debrief and they can practice the skills that they're learning until they get it. So that's the whole point. There are certain things that we can't do. Uh, there are two components of a, an effective program we can't do in the school setting. Um, and one of them is uh, just physically processing um, the traumas that have happened in the past. Uh, that's something for have, would have to happen outside. And given the nature of trauma-based behaviors, it's not necessary anyway. We don't need to deal with the behaviors. And dealing with the behaviors isn't going to be effective anyway. What we really need to do is teach you how to figure out when you're being triggered and how to short circuit it right now. Um, so the behavior piece, that's, that's for something bigger than us. Anyone else? Or anything else? That's it. can't explain. <laughs>
know some of them are, um, I'll attempt to answer. I, I don't know for all of them. I know some of them, they don't get out of, uh, of work in time in order to get here for six. Uh, Our meetings are generally at 6.30, and the reason is, is to accommodate their travel so they can get here for the meetings. I know of uh, one that has a reoccurring meeting uh, on, on this Monday, and it's first and third, and so uh, usually we meet on the second Monday, and, and, and so that kind of thing. And then uh, I'm, I'm aware of at least one member who is sick. So uh, I'm not sure about all of them, but I know that the flu or whatever the bug that's going around has hit some of them as well. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is proper to ask at this point. Do we have any of the candidates for? Uh, that would be improper. This is a meeting. We can't discuss candidates. Okay. Any other questions? We have other reports, a school board report, a principal's report, or our TTC report in here. And copies of those are up front if you have questions about any of those reports. Seeing none, I will move to Article 6 to see whether the school district will authorize the school board to borrow money pending receipt of payments from the member towns by the issuance of notes or orders payable not later than one year from the date thereof. What is the pleasure of the meeting? Lane. Could I make a comment? Yes. Just so folks. You can make a comment before there's a motion on the floor because we're pretty in informal around here. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so folks know, know what this is. Um, school budgets, they run from July 1st to June 30th. Um, we are up and in operation in the new budget year before any tax money comes in. Typically, we get a little bit from the state in September, and we get uh, tax money from the town in November. So this is unusual um, coming to Vermont from Massachusetts in that most districts, if not all districts, have to borrow money to be in operation until that funding comes in. That's what this one is. Patsy. So moved. Second. The motion's been made and seconded. Now is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All in favor of the motion to authorize the school board to borrow money pending receipt of payments from the member towns, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it and the motion carries. Articles 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 are to be voted on by Australian ballot in the respective towns. The polls for the town of Braintree open, are at the town clerk's office and open at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning and are open until 7 p.m. The polls for the town of Brookfield are at the Brookfield Elementary School. And they, that opens at 9 a.m. and stays open until 7 p.m. The polls for the town of Randolph are at the Randolph Town Hall, and those open at 7 a.m. and remain open until 7 p.m. Linda. Do, um, we need to make a motion on Article 5 about accepting the reports. Uh, we can make the motion. Uh, so the motion, if, if anybody wants to make a motion, to the, the suggested that we move to accept the various reports of the town, of the school officials, of the officers of the school district. So moved. It's been moved. Second. Is there a second? second? There's a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it, and the motion carries. There is an unwarned, any other business to come before the meeting, proper to come before the meeting, and it's my invitation to ask any of the elected school officials or administrators any questions you may have, remembering the unwarned article would only be a advisory opinion, not an acting vote. So, is there any other business to come before the meeting? 